Hi, I'm Melissa, a first year PhD candidate from the Department of Psychology. I recently got the opportunity to collaborate on this super interesting study that investigates the neural changes occurring in the brain during euthanasia. Essentially, the brain is assumed to be less active during death. However, there is now proof that the brain appears to be in a state of heightened processing. One study revealed a transient surge of gamma oscillations in rats, and this occurred within 30 seconds of their cardiac arrest. This was also observed in a more recent study that obtained continuous EEG recording from a dying human brain. Gamma activity is typically associated with higher brain functions like memory and cognition, so that discovery was shocking. Our study utilizes intracranially implanted electrodes to obtain continuous EEG from four regions of the dying rat brain. The regions were the anterior cingulate cortex, the thalamus, the trigeminal ganglion, and the primary visual cortex. We recorded for a total of 35 minutes, five minutes of baseline activity, and 30 minutes after the commencement of euthanasia. 21 rats were euthanized under anesthesia, while 18 rats were euthanized while conscious. Our results show the same surge of gamma power during the period of death with significant differences between the groups. So this figure here shows the activity going on during euthanasia. The blue lines represent the awake group while the orange lines represent the anesthetized group. And the red asterisks show that there's a significant difference at that time point, but not in that region. But we can see that the gamma waves were significantly different between the groups, with the anesthetized group having higher power. Out of 39 rats, only four rats failed to show this burst-like gamma activity. In the anesthetized group, the burst was more of a subtle decline of power. It wasn't necessarily like a depolarization. It was more so just like a one directional decline. However, on the awake group, there was more of a back and forth between being conscious and not being conscious. There are marked spikes here on the left-hand side. We can see that the spikes are a little more obvious compared to the anesthetized group. In the anesthetized group, this burst was observed approximately one minute after the commencement of CO2, while it took longer in the awake group and was observed approximately two minutes after. This is like what was observed in the previous study where within 30 minutes, sorry, within 30 seconds of cardiac arrest, they observed that gamma surge. A likely explanation for this high frequency burst is as a result of anoxic depolarization. Essentially, this occurs when the concentration of oxygen in the brain decreases and the neurons are unable to perform aerobic metabolism. So the concentration of CO2 increases. This leads to an excessive amount of CO2 in the brain and no ATP causing the sodium potassium pumps to fail. Anoxic depolarization was pretty obvious in all the frequency bands of the awake group as we can see here. There is a depolarization that begins two minutes after euthana euthanasia was started, which is around seven minutes of our recording. We can see that the blue lines show more of a depolarization compared to the orange lines with more of just a slope decline. This could be due to the sedating effect of anesthesia, meaning that the anesthetized rats are not attempting to reoxygenate and they're just going in one direction. Now, the question is, what does this neuroactivity mean for humans? What could this mean for near-death experiences? Could this explain why people describe feeling this transcending experience when they're close to death? Could this mean that our brains are processing information when we die? We're not sure. So further research should seek novel ways to measure our consciousness and see if this birth could potentially mean anything for near-death experiences. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening.